using the tween light library function, I'm saying tween light two. With the two function, I simply say the ending values that I want to have. All right? So, in this case, I want to take my photo. So, that photo represents the photo that I clicked on. I want to take two seconds. That's what that two indicates. And I want to change the width to 600 and the height to 600. Here I do have to specify both the height and width. All right? The, that library requires it. So this will do a tween. In other words, whatever size it starts out with, all right, it's going to take two seconds to expand it to 600 pixels. This example of a tween, in other words, I don't specify every microsecond that expand it one pixel, one pixel, one pixel. I just say the ending destination and how long you're going to take, and it figures out all the steps in between. So I could make this take longer. I could take 20 seconds to expand. As I click on it, it goes very slowly. So I don't have to specify every step. I just specify the ending destination, the ending parameters for the width and the height, and how long I want it to take. I can make it go really fast. 0.5 seconds. Boom, it expands like that. Or by putting in a different parameters here, I could make the picture get gigantic. So that's the key to a tween. With a tween, you simply specify a starting position and an ending, or I don't want to say position, a starting characteristic and an ending characteristic. And the library fills out everything in between. All right? It generates those sizes in between. It does a calculation and comes up with that. Now notice I didn't specify a starting position. If with, with this function, with this tween light function, if I specify a 2, if I use the 2 function, it starts off whatever it is now. So I don't have to specify a starting point if I want it to start where it is now. If I wanted the picture maybe to hop somewhere and then do this, I would specify a from option. That would, would, be, would happen as soon as this fires up. If it's already big, I do the opposite, and I shrink it down to 200 pixels. Now, I don't expect you to be a JavaScript expert, all right? But the few things to note in this example are that, number one, we have an on something event here. That's what gets the ball rolling. There's, there's events on HTML elements that when this happens, do this. And what are we doing? We're going to call my expand function, which is a function I wrote, and I'm going to do it to this photo, the photo that I clicked on. JavaScript functions are typically in the head section, and they're included in a script tag. They start with the word function, the name of the function, the parameters, and then these braces are used to group stuff together. For example, this brace and this brace indicate that function, the start and end of that function. 
this brace and this brace indicates the true part of the if statement. This and this indicates the false part. If statements like this have a condition in them, that's evaluated, that's either true or not. No, yes, no, or maybe. Either this photo has a width of 200 pixels or it doesn't. If this is true, we do this. If it's false, we do that. And again, that tween light is where I'm using some of the built-in stuff in this framework to go and accomplish that. It's a pretty simple tween to just go from there to there. So with just something like this, you could build a nice little photo gallery, for example, for your project, hint, hint, with thumbnails that if you clicked on them, it would, uh, it, it would expand them. Now you can play with all kinds of things about the layout, and you can make it like look a little bit different, but this basic functionality would allow you to expand a thumbnail into a, a full version of it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be HTML5. Does not appear to this. Nothing about this is really HTML5. <coughs> correct. An image tag is not an H. Well, it is an HTML5, but it's not specific to HTML5. All right. Let's look at the second example. And the second example. as a little slideshow of images. There probably is a better way to do parts of this. But I was working on this late last night, and so I just got it working. All right? We can talk about a better way to do this. Again, I have my three images here. But I've done a little trickery with the CSS to make them lay on top of each other. All right? I've, I've tweaked the position so that these three images all sit on top of each other. That's the sloppy part. I probably could have done a better job on that. All right? Well... What does this mean, position relative? Position relative means where the browser normally wants to put it, I want to adjust it. How do I want to adjust it? Negative 210. So negative 210 would push it up 210 pixels. So that's not a size. It's a, it's a, it's a position. It's a position, right, top. I want to take the top of it from where it normally would be. Now, where would it normally be? It would be right underneath the other picture, right? And I want to push it up 210 pixels. And then I want to push this one up 420 pixels. And that just, boom, aligns them right on top of each other. That's the sloppy part. All right, the rest of it is pretty decent. Now, this particular animation doesn't require the user to do anything. So there's no on-click event or anything. Although I could have put one in here. I could have a click here to start the slideshow. All right. But instead, the slideshow starts off immediately when the page loads. So there still is an event. It's just that the event is the onload event. So I can specify when the page is done loading, go ahead and do this. All right? Again, what is this? This is a function that I wrote called slideshow that uses the timeline. First thing I do is I make a variable for each of my three pictures, P1 through P3. I just do that so I can shorthand down here, call them P1, P2, and P3. It's just an easy way to do that. I create a new timeline light object. What's a timeline? A timeline is a series of events. All right. And by the way, when this timeline finishes, what do I want to do? 
I want to start the whole slideshow over again. So I put in on complete slideshow. So I'll create the timeline. It will run the animation once. When that timeline is complete, it will go up and run the animation again and run it again and run it again. So that's why this continues to go the whole time. Because I simply tell it, when you're done, go ahead and repeat yourself. So this name matches that name. Now, what do I do? My timeline itself could be made up of a lot of different things, but really, all this, is, all this timeline is, is a collection of tweens. And what I do is I gradually turn up the opacity of the one image, then turn it down. Turn up the opacity of the second image and turn it down. So I'm fading in and fading out each image. Yes. Can you do that simultaneously to two images so that it dissolves? Or is there a, a separate command for it to So I want to do this simultaneously. It, it, yeah, no, I know, I understand. You could actually probably do that with a tween, with two tweens. One to tween in one and one to tween out one. So you, you probably wouldn't use a timeline for that because the timeline for that is a series of sequential events. The tweens that you're talking about are, two, are not sequential events. You want them both to happen at the same time, in which case you, would use, um, you could use two tweens to do a dissolve between the two. Is that a good wow or a bad wow? Uh, it's, it's a good wow because... Uh there's things I've done in the past that oh, it would have been so much easier right. to do this way. Well, again, that's the whole idea of using a framework. The whole idea of using a framework is when you talk about some task in web development, there's some things that are like really standard that everyone's doing or doing something very similar to it. So anyone who's doing animation is, is probably going to be doing tweens somewhere in it. So you, you use a tool that makes doing that easy so you don't have to write it on your own. Now, a student mentioned Visual Studio before, and Visual Studio is often used with the ASP.NET framework. An ASP.NET framework is a framework for developing websites, largely that interact with databases. Everyone that develops websites that interact with databases do, a same, do, do a handful of things, or more than a handful of things, that are the same as everyone else, right? So why should every one of those people reinvent the wheel. Instead, they create a framework that you can use and, and it gives you a jumping off point, a good starting point. Another advantage of using a framework, by the way, is standardization. Let's say we were on a big project where each of us was responsible for a certain set of pages. All right? If we all used this framework, our code would be a lot more consistent than if we were all on our own cobbling together solutions. All right? So I use this framework not just because it's a good way to introduce some of these concepts and technologies to beginners, but because even professionals use them, you know? I may know how to write a JavaScript tween, all right? But that doesn't mean I want to spend my life doing it, all right? I have other things to do. And if someone can provide me a framework that does that pretty well, I'll be happy to use it so I can focus on really the stuff that's distinct to my particular project. All right, questions on this. What I will do for next time is I do want to do a little more involved animation in this. All right, these are nice starting points, and it and shows nice, simple, and beneficial uses for this sort of technology. But I want to do a little bit more. I also want to give you folks time to practice on this, so I'll have to decide over the weekend how that's going to work. Any questions at this point? Yes. Uh, with GreenSock, is there any more examples other than the tween and the time? Oh, there, there's. You go to the website, there's millions of them. So the browser not really track anything down, really. Yeah, let's see. But then again, slow one to pull down the other end. Yeah, what exactly is this? 
are some examples. It's asking you to download if you want the files locally, if you don't want to point to them on the web. That, for a lot of these frameworks, that seems to be a very popular way to do it. Again, for his concern, well, to give you the option of either downloading it or pointing it to a script somewhere. Um, forum that shows some code. can download this example. They gave, they gave an uh, uh, login. But the, the answer is yes, there's, there's a lot of examples. 